the potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. Once you change your philosophy, you change your thought pattern. Once you change your thought pattern, you change your, your attitude. Once you change your attitude, it changes your behavior pattern. And then you go on into some action. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Are, are we, uh, is it live on YouTube? Is it's that live, it yes. Screaming Rebels podcast, we're back, season three. I'm Hector with George Guzman, <laughs> fiddling around with shit. <laughs> and uh, our special guest, Victor. How's it going, everybody? Good, I'm good. Good, very good. All right. So, so we're going to talk about Obamacare. Oh, before we talk, uh, there's a few questions. Things I wanted to ask. Uh, one of them was, is this a new thing with YouTube doing the whole live thing? Is this something that they that they added that you could just stream straight into YouTube now? I believe so. And right now, what you're gonna see is me flipping through. I'm learning how to do this, so bear with us. It's a new thing. I barely found out. I actually found out. I guess they've been having it for over a year with uh, the UK. And so I guess it's barely recently hit the states. Uh, a lot of kids in the UK have been doing their predictions and everything this way. Now, when um, it's live, is it recorded also? Let me move this out. Of, I don't know if it's affecting audio, but is it also recorded where people can watch it later? Yes, it's actually. Um, this is the way that I've been doing it because it's a lot easier for me to do because uh, less rendering time. So, like, I'll do my intro and then I download it and then I. I down I do the video through here and then on the YouTube editor I just mash it all together. Now that's right because you do that MMA also. So this is how you've been doing the MMA um, predictions then. I started the the one that I just started uh, for the UFC 168 was done this way. So here's something interesting and I don't know if you know Hector. Now Victor might know because Victor's also a gamer, but um, uh, YouTube or Google I should say changed um, a lot of their policies and this was probably like a week back. And when they changed their policies, <laughs> they they put in a um, they they added a new program, I guess, where when it runs um, through YouTube and you upload like a video, uh, it finds the copyright material a lot quicker instead of having each person view each videos because they have so many videos that are uploaded every second now. Well, the problem that they had with this, and this especially happened in the gaming world, is all every single uh, gaming YouTube that was out there. You know, everybody does those let's plays or the walkthroughs, or um, you know, let me show you what this game's about, or just reviews. Every single one was taken down because it was flagged as a copyright infringement. Victor doesn't like his beer. <laughs> I always do that with the first one. First <laughs> <she said. laughs> <laughs> But uh, with, with the, the, he was making some funny faces with that beer. The, but what happened was, and I thought it was really interesting, was so all across the board, everybody's video got taken down. But this is people's livelihood, you know, because a lot of people make money off of yeah. YouTube. You know, you put up videos, as many subscribers as you get, as many hits as you get. That's They pay you, uh, you know, in monetary value of whatever, you know, subscriptions you can get because they're paying you back the ads that people watch on your station. So um, it was a huge uproar, and they were trying to get um, everything fixed, you know, um, Google as quick as they, they could. But all the gaming companies like Ubisoft, I'm trying to remember what they, I think it was like 2K, you know, they were all saying, hey, you know, if you've had problems with our video games, don't worry about it. You know, um, just live it. That's like that's how I found out really about this YouTube Live, that people are doing a lot more of this. So when I was watching all these, uh, like I like watching Polygon, and they're mm -hmm. a pretty big one. Um, you know, like Rooster Teeth or another big one. When they were all doing their stuff, it always said live. Even if they weren't live, it was just kind of relooping itself because they couldn't show the videos at the time. Like Google was trying to fix this new policy. It was it, so. It was funny because the article that I read was as many good things as Google has done. This is one of the biggest failures that have can be attributed to them. You know what's scary about Google is they actually bought a robotics company that makes. Um, I guess that has major contracts with the U.S. Army, so that's, I don't know what the fuck <laughs> Google's like, <laughs> but it's pretty fucking terrifying. If they, had, they had that fucking cheetah that runs, have you seen that cheetah that they have, that mechanical cheetah that runs at 26 miles an hour? 
I've heard of that. Is that Google's? That's Google's as well. I was like, they're <laughs> fucking Terminators for the fucking end of days and shit. I saw that. Um, yeah, at the. They said they're gonna. All the contracts that they have open now with the government, they're gonna honor. Yeah. Up until they run out, I guess. But yeah, those robots look kind of freaky. So there, if there the government a, says we that. want some fucking Terminators, uh, there is a meme. Yeah, it's uh, it it says you know about how Google comes about, and then I think it's like 2015 they they changed their name to what is it Skynet or what what is the <laughs> what, what's the, the, the yeah. is it a Skynet the Terminator one yeah, <laughs> yeah, they changed their name. <laughs> All right, talking about Skynet, uh, let's get into this uh bad bitch. Um, we're gonna talk about the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, which is, AKA is Obamacare. Uh, this one took place on March 23rd, 2010, and is barely going to come into effect in January 1st. Um, we're we we're going to talk about pros and cons about it, but talking about you, talking to you guys previously, I kind of noticed that I think it's going to be more of a pro, uh, con show than a pro show. I don't think any of us are going to agree with the whole Obamacare. Uh, Victor, since you're our guest, I want you to go ahead and give us your insight or thought about the Obamacare and what you think about it. Uh, to be honest, I really haven't, like, looked it up. Uh, I just know, you know, it, it's a government-run health care. Uh, my personal opinion, I, I do think we need to have health care paid for by the government, um, similar to, like, France and, and Canada has. Okay, but with that, that kind of being said, a lot of these countries have kind of fallen into uh, defuncts or possible bankruptcies because of these kind of policies in the past. And Canada has been one of those people that I've met Canadians that are all about a boot, the, the health care and how they hate it. So it's one of these things that it's a, it's a sounds like a great theory and anything in theory is great until you actually play it in real life. George, what's your thoughts on this? <laughs> I feel like we're we're playing around the horn or something here at ZSPN, but especially since Hector keeps on clicking back from video to video. <laughs> I'm just yeah, but like unlike ESPN, we can use fuck, shit, ass, dick, and whatever, and it's all good. It's not gonna be edited. I don't know. I'm scared you're gonna mute me for thirty seconds and say time out. <laughs> fuck you, Jorge. Uh, I, honestly, from everything that I've learned about it, um, I I actually like it. And uh, so I am a, a, a pro Obamacare, um, and you know, with the <laughs> I know we had the government shut down and everything because of it, and that was a really bad view uh, for the Republicans. Everybody knows that Republicans. We're, this isn't really too much of a political podcast, but you know they they really screwed up, and every, they're suffering even in their own Republicans' eyes. And even the the um, you know the leader of the House has admitted it now. You know that that was really a, a bad mistake and a bad uh, move. The only reason why I like it is because. I feel like he's trying to put um, Obama with this. Is he realizes there's already a problem, anyways, with insurance? We already know there's a problem with that, you know, and it has to get fixed. And I know that because um, I'm a poor guy. <laughs> Despite all my fancy armory that I have right here and my gear <laughs> and this stuff, I'm not a guy that can go out there and say, "Oh, you know, uh, <laughs> I'm a little sick. I'm going to go to the doctor." I was sick a few weeks back, and I had to get somebody um, <laughs> to give me. Medicines illegally because I couldn't afford to go to a doctor and get them legally. Like I couldn't afford to go in there, um, you know. And that's what he's trying to do is he's trying to say, hey, you know, we need to help everybody out. And insurance has been screwing people over for a long time, you know. Um, you know, in this, and I mean, you guys can at least agree with this. But there's a few things that he did uh, add into this policy, and one of them now is you can now go to an insurance and they can't test you. Now, what that means is, let's say you have a pre-heart condition. In the past, insurance companies would test you and say, oh, um, you, you already have high blood pressure and you have this. Oh, we're going to decline you or we're going to raise your premiums. We're, we're sorry, but hey, man, you got a heart problem. We don't want to deal with that. You know, they, they treated it more like it was a lottery. Like, hey, man, some you win, some you lose. And, you know, and with this stuff that's coming out, that's one of the, like, that to me is a, a huge thing. You can now go to any insurance. They cannot ask you any questions. They cannot say, 
um, have you had any past history, you know, with the with cancer in your family or doc they can't do that. They can't set a standard based off those things. And to me, I think that that's, I mean, you at least have to admit, Hector, I mean, in the field, I mean, you're in the clinical field, that that's got to be a pretty good thing because that does suck for a lot of people that go. And then it's like, man, you know, well, I only make 21000 a year and I want to keep my job, but they want to, they want me to pay, you know, $500 a month because of my pre-existing condition. It's okay. like a house, like a house payment or a car payment or something. Okay. So I'm just going to say this real quick. <laughs> um, it's a fucking nightmare on the medical side. Uh, <laughs> people, now with the Affordable Care Act, what people don't know and people have to understand, and this is why one of the things I wanted to do the show is kind of to inform because this is what our show does. We, we, we talk, we joke around, but in the end we're trying to inform people. And so what I'm really trying to emphasize on doing the show is that the Obamacare Act is kind of like you pay as you go kind of insurance. You either have the money or you don't, but either way, you're still going to get an insurance plan. The issue with that is that people don't know about things such as deductibles, annual deductibles, laboratory deductibles, yeah. emergency room deductibles, coinsurance. Coinsurance means that you can go to the hospital and you say you have pneumonia and they're going to run uh, – White, uh, they're going to do a CBC, they're going to do an EKG, they're going to do all these things. Well, some of it might not be covered by your health plan. And so you're going to be end up responsible for those, for those uh, things that, that your insurance is not covering. A lot of people don't understand that. So, and my thing is that if you're going, you're going to have to be forced to get an insurance. It's regardless. Um, if you're broke or, or don't have any money, when you go to the emergency room, the first thing they're going to do is have you apply for Medi-Cal. Now, if a Medi-Cal denies you, then you have to go into one of these affordable plans. And these affordable plans, you know, they might sound good and be like, oh, you know what, I only have to pay 20 bucks a month. But then you really have to look at the, uh, the aspect of how much is my annual deductible going to be costing and is it actually going to be worth you getting that insurance knowing that if you go one time and that one time you have a $4,000 deductible, are you going to yeah. be able to pay that? Or is it better that you don't have any insurance and you can still get a discounted rate going to the hospital because the, almost all hospitals give a discounted rate if you're going to pay cash up front. Yeah. So is it better for you? Is it better for not? My personal thing is I don't like the fucking government to tell me that I need to get a fucking insurance. If I don't want to get an insurance, it's not the government's issue to say you have to get an insurance now. But you have insurance. But Yeah, but I have insurance. <laughs> but if I didn't want any... Why should I be forced to buy one and then and then get penalized for every month that I don't have it two hundred and two hundred and fifty dollars? Well, you know, and and I've heard a lot of people because uh, I had a, a coworker that said the exact same thing. Like that was her big thing. She just said, "Hey, why does the government have to tell me? Like I just don't want them budding in my life, you know." And <clears throat> and like I've had other coworkers that say, you know, but I, I rarely go. Like you're saying, why why is it that if I go once a year, I got to pay this X amount of money? Um, and you know, and I don't think that's what it is. I think it's just um. You know, when they de developed the whole Medi-Cal system and stuff, they, they didn't realize the strain that it would end up putting on our system anyways, as it is. It would, man, I mean, have you, you and I have talked about this off-camera so many times. How many people abuse this stuff? Yeah. All the freebies, all that go in, and, you know, and it's taxpayers' dollars. And you've even said, man, sometimes it gets on my nerves. Like, you can see there's people that clearly need it, but there's a lot of people that just milk the system. And, what yeah. he's, I mean, what he's hoping to try to do, he's just hoping... I mean, you know, and that's all we can, you know, try to see is if maybe it can alleviate some of that strain. Now, is it going to be an easy thing? Nah, man. I mean, we knew that this was going to be a pain in the ass for everybody. This was supposed to take effect last year or this past year, past January. But they realized, man, this is bigger than what we thought. We need to extend this another year because we don't got enough time to put all this paperwork and all these things and get everybody I'm ready. Together. <laughs> well, and here's the thing is everybody's saying, oh, well, you need insurance by the first. Okay. Well, it's going to take effect on January 1st, but that doesn't mean that you actually – you're not going to get penalized until 2015. So if you don't have insurance by 2000 – so they're giving you another year. So everything takes effect January actually, 1st, 2014. You, you, have, you have to have some sort of plan for them to be recognized by March 23rd is, is the original date that you have to have an insurance on. If you say if you're working for a company and you decide that you don't want insurance through that company – by March 23rd, you really have to decide on what it is or you will get penalized. Uh, Victor, quick question. 
Yeah. Uh, you have private insurance, correct? Correct. Have your in have has your policies changed in the last couple? Of months? <laughs> well, according to to like our HR department, uh, they say we're having to pay more now and receiving <laughs> less because of they're blaming it on on Obamacare. I don't know how true it is. Bullshit. Uh, it kind of it kind of feels like. Bullshit. The insurance companies and the doctors are trying to make it fail purposely, so it, we could just give up on it and go back to go back to what we had what we had before. Hey, hey, George, you had your time to talk, okay? <laughs> your chance right now. Hey, this isn't around the horn. You said you were gonna uh, buzz me out for thirty seconds. <laughs> Cause you're getting a warning right now. <laughs> He's gonna kick me out of my own hangout. <laughs> okay. Next time we're doing uh, it in person, so you can't kick me out. That's that's fine. I'll, I'll have a security guard personally escort you out of the building. <laughs> You've been to too many MMA matches. <laughs> okay. All right, go I, ahead, go ahead. I was just saying that because my my policies have increased by a lot, and they say it's because of the Obamacare. Um, and and it's, it's true and it's not true. The way that I feel it is is that I feel that Obama wanted this thing done and to happen, and because he wanted it to happen, he had to kind of agree with, the terms of the insurance companies. The insurance companies are going to increase their 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 rates. They're going to increase everything else because they fucking can. There's nobody else that could tell them what to do. And at this time, when everybody is panicking, instead of saying, "Hey, we're going to help you. Don't worry. Everything's going to be okay," they're like, "Fuck that shit. Let's raise everything a little bit more and make these people panic even more," because now they're looking at. I, they're looking at the financial gain of people needing insurance because some people are going to have health net, some people are going to have Blue Cross, some people are going to have Cigna and Kaiser, but that doesn't mean they're necessarily going to have the same plans. So I just think in the end, Obama kind of agreed with the insurance companies to allow them to do whatever the fuck they want to do just to have this policy happen. And it's not, I'm not like anti-Obama, I'm just saying. No, you are anti-Obama. We've talked about this before, too. <laughs> you even said before we got on here, I hate Obama. <laughs> <laughs> you did the other day. You said that, that you blame me for ending our relationship because I can't remember what it was. And then I said, I blamed you. And I said, just because you hate Obama, I'm going to go buy a PC and not a Mac. <laughs> You're such a fucking liar. <laughs> <laughs> no. Since you're... You're all about, I guess, the other side and Mac. <laughs> oh, what's the other side? You're saying I'm a fucking Republican? I'm not even a fucking Republican. Or Tea Party or something. Oh, that's even worse. Now you're to call me a fucking Republican. <laughs> I grew my hair out. There's no, there's no swastika on me, and I don't fucking. Well, we can't see it anymore. We can't see. The Tea Party's over. The Tea Party days were over when you did. When the Tea Party was going on, you shaved your head. And then all of a sudden you grew your hair back. I don't know what happened. That's <laughs> I haven't been over there. That's bullshit. <laughs> it, well, and, you know, um, a quick, you know, and it's funny. The reason why I say when you ask them about the policies, because everywhere has been changing, even at my job, and, and the same thing. We got worse insurance, and um, you know, and like he's saying, we had to pay more for to get less. But um, my my cousin was a uh, uh, venting on Facebook. Uh, and he was saying the same thing. He works for Pepsi, and he's like, "Man, they, you know, my insurance they just upped it up, and and I'm getting crap now." And he was blaming it on Obamacare because that's what everybody was doing. And I go, "Look, I'll tell you right now." And and then that's why I told him, "I go, it used to be in the past when our parents, you know, were getting a job. You, when you look for a job, you look for certain things. You look for one, job security, that you're gonna keep your job. You know, two, for the pay that you're gonna get, that you're gonna get good pay that you could sp support your family, right? And then three. It was always like benefits. Well, what are the benefits? Like insurance. But what he just did, and the fact that you can go to any insurance you want, he just made it, he just did what insurance companies actually want, even though they're saying they don't want it. He turned it into capitalism. And now you can go, now it's like I can choose to go to the grocery market that's going to charge me $5 for a damn avocado, or I could go across the street and they're going to give me the same avocado two for a dollar. Or you now, can be Mexican and just fucking go pick your own avocado from a tree. 
<laughs> you can. That's right. I can go to Mexico and buy my own drugs. I don't got to be doing all this. But you know, and order a subscription online, a prescription. But uh, you know, but that's that's the whole thing that they did. And so, what insur insurance companies are smart. Like I said, they don't want to lose money. So when they know you have pre heart conditions, all this stuff, they don't want to lose money. To them, it's a gamble. So what do they do? They said, well, hey, you know what? We'll change all the policies. By the time people realize this and they start wising up and they start going to other companies, we'll already have made millions of dollars in the first couple of years and then we'll adjust our policies again once we start losing people. But so I, the first thing I've been telling everybody, hey, you know what? Um, you guys are trying to blame Obamacare? Go search for another insurance. I guarantee you there's another insurance out there that's going to offer you more for less pay because they're not in some big company. They didn't pay into that company. You're going to find an insurance company that says, man, I can't afford to go into Pepsi. But you know what? Now I got a chance. I can. I have a chance in order to go with the little guy and say, hey, you know what? I can offer you this. You know, and They're out there. But the thing is that you have to do the research. And like you said, I mean, it, it just takes time. All that stuff is paperwork, time. And that's the you know what Obamacare has been doing this whole past year mm -hmm. is trying to you know create these websites to try to make it easier for people. Now, the research, when you asked me if I did any, um, I get consumer reports, and when this uh, this whole thing came out with the Obamacare consumer reports was one of the first. My magazine came in. I was like, man, this is a long article. They always come with like little paragraphs, one page. It was like six pages, you know. And then the next one came in, and the same thing. It was like five pages, and they've been explaining everything step by step by step, and saying this is what's happening. And they were like updating everybody on what's going on. The, and you know, and it's funny because consumer reports. I always kind of go to them. I like checking out what they have, like for the like they rate everything: electronics, food. Well, now they're rating in insurance companies, and they're telling you which are the top insurance companies to go for if you're single, if you're in a family, if you're married, if this is your income, if that's your income. And they're even saying in this, if you're in this state, like in California, they've extended Medicare or Medicaid. So then, if you know, in the past it might have been twelve thousand. Well, now they want to make it go up to about eighteen thousand because it's one of the states that have accepted it. So I mean, it, it's it's out there, and they're trying to help people. I know it's super confusing, you know. Um, and like you said, the policies get changed. That's why I was just laughing because you know everybody who says, and then that's the first thing they say. Oh, it's because of Obamacare. Well, no, it's the, the insurance. The insurance just wants to fuck you. Yeah. That's really what they want to do. It has nothing to do with Obamacare. You know, they're gonna blame them because it's that's an easy scapegoat. <laughs> it's Obamacare. That's like when we blame them for everything. You know, like damn, my dog died today. Fucking Obama. You know. I mean, if he wouldn't have done all these damn changes and stuff, my dog, I would have been able to afford him dog food today. <laughs> so That's true, though. <laughs> it, it is. It's just an easy cop-out, man. I mean, you know. I that's don't think it's I a cop-out. I just think it, it's, I don't think it's a cop-out. I'm not saying it's all about <laughs> blaming Obama. But I, you, you, when you work in politics, you kind of have to lay with your enemy a little bit. And you have to have a little bit of compromise and a little say-so for you to get your shit that you want. To happen. That's okay. all I'm saying. The gov Let me ask Victor. He works for the government, so this is oh, the yeah. you. No, no, no. You gotta shut up for a bit now. Okay, <laughs> Victor. How did the the government shutdown affect you then? And that wasn't Obama. That was a Republican. Well, we didn't we didn't get affected because we're not we're not state and we're not federal. We're not county. We're kind of our own entity. Uh, we used to be county. Well, we used to be. I work for the courts, and uh, we used to be county, but we separated from them because all of their layoffs and their insurance was affecting us. So our CEO and the higher ups decided that we're going to be our own. So we have our own. Uh, the only thing I think we still have with the county is our retirement. But uh, we didn't. I didn't take any time off or anything with the when the government shut down. All right. Well, but, since you got lucky, I don't, I don't know. but you you must have known yeah. people like you know that were there. I mean, uh, like if I mean you must have known some people like if there are police officers or anything or any other you know actual government officials, how it affected them. I mean, were they happy about it or were they mad? Were they upset? Because I have family that work for the IRS and they were pretty pissed. Yeah, I have an, I have an, uh, a couple of aunts that work for the IRS and I know they were at home, but I didn't get a chance to talk to them. Uh, to ask them, you know, if they were mad or they were losing money. I I think they got that money reimbursed, didn't they? Or I'm not sure. But I had a, I have a couple. I of thought they. <clears throat> so the the way that it works, because my father worked for the prison uh, system for years, is that when you have a government shutdown like that, 
<clears throat> your bank can promise you to hold a, kind of basically a loan of how much you get monthly. So they go by how much you usually get normally, <clears throat> and they'll give you a loan <clears throat> during that black during that that you know when the, the blackout or whatever you call it that freeze. And so you can still go on, and then once it becomes ineffective and they reimburse you, it just goes back to the bank. So a lot of banks do do that where, where they basically make a loan for these people so they can carry on because everybody, those people, are, it's like an essential thing to get that paycheck at the first of the month. The, the, car, the car dealership's not going to wait, you know, a couple <laughs> weeks till that shit's finished. The, lo the mortgage is not going to wait for you. So I know banks do do like basically a, a, a loan until that money comes in. So they'll kind of average out of what you normally get and allow you that allowance. So then it would just depend on what bank you had too, though. Yeah. Right? So then you might not get be that lucky person that got the loan. I know Wells Fargo does it. I think all the major branches do it. And I think like some of the, the credit, unions? credit unions do it as well. I think, it's a, I think it's kind of a policy that goes all the way around. So if you get reimbursed, was there really any point for that anyways, to have a government shutdown like that? Well. And to blame it on Obama? <laughs> I think it just looks good. It's probably just a political statement. The, the Republicans were like, you know, we're not going to give you this, so we're going to shut it down. You know, it's like, I'm taking my ball home with me, you know, kind of. <laughs> Fuck you guys, I'm going home. Yeah. I'm taking my ball too. <laughs> hey, man, you, you're the one who has the ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I have another question for you guys. Um, with the insurance stuff, have you guys noticed that, like, my insurance now does this thing where you have point systems against you. So every year you get weighed, you get checked, you do your blood pressure and that, and then they average out you're either obese, morbidly obese, normal, your cholesterol is good and this and that, and so they give you a ranking system. So and what so are you? The following year, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> you the following year, what are you? the next year you go, they expect you to either lose like four or five pounds, your cholesterol <laughs> to be lower, and this and this and that has to be done beforehand. If no, they could ding you and kind of lower your plan as you're not being compliant. I don't know if any of you guys have got that kind of no. bullshit insurance. I haven't seen that, no. haven't seen that either. Um, I think that's more like if you're in the health field because I have a friend that works for Aetna, I think it is. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. That's, that used to be our, server, our insurance provider, and they got rid of them to get a cheaper one. Yeah, they. She works for them, and she gets. She she mentioned that point system, where if she rides her bike every day, she accumulates points, <laughs> where she could like go out and like buy a new bike later on, like next year or something. It's kind of like a monetary thing to stay healthy. There you go, Hector. You got to start riding a bike. You yeah. can't be. You can't be drinking Rolling Rock. You know what? Bramble says, "What's up?" Where's What's up, Hector? Well, why don't you share your drink? Your drink has more calories than mine. What are you talking about? My glass is empty. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing there. You're an alcoholic. <laughs> There's nothing cool. there. We started. We just want to know what's up. That's all we want to oh know. Oh, my God. You and that mono. Um, <laughs> no, mono's a monkey. The, uh, no, <laughs> so I've never heard of this point system, and that's actually new to me, so maybe I should have looked up a little bit more research. And I tie, and maybe that's the loophole that they're trying to get around because I tell you, they have the thing now where it's the law where they can't ask you any pre-existing conditions. So no, maybe that's the loophole is to say, oh well, we're not doing, we're not asking him if he's obese. We're giving him points, <laughs> and he just lost a couple of points. <laughs> he's actually negative a hundred, but but he can get them back. <laughs> yeah. Well, my cholesterol is so good. I've lost weight, so they can. Go jump off a fucking bridge for all so I care. Is, is that why you've been eating healthy now? Is that why no, you're all that those has nothing to do with, <laughs> with me keeping my hands. Every and, time I see a picture now, I'm going to be like, yes, you got another point. Yes. Yeah. One for the team. One for Screaming <laughs> Rebels. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, that's not why. You know, it's just health reasons. I want to live longer for my kids, I guess. I want to fucking. I would like to actually. Here's my accomplish. This is something I want to accomplish next year. Is actually run a mar uh, one of those color me rads or one of those bullshits. 
<laughs> the zombie, the zombie, the zombie run. Zombie run. Hey, don't fucking make fun of me. That's one of my shits that I want to do. No, no, that's cool. I mean, I always wanted to do a marathon. I just thought I wanted to do like a, you know, like a real marathon, not the I'm gonna color myself, and uh, <laughs> and or like walk like a zombie 25 miles, <laughs> 26 miles. You actually don't walk like a zombie. You run from the zombies. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this is like World War Z, where like these zombies are super fast. No. I fucking don't know. If they're in shape zombies, I guess they yeah. They're, <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna catch up with your morbidly obese ass. <laughs> they they hire nothing but those fucking Iron Man competition guys to be zombies. <laughs> Wait, so if you if they if they had to do that, that would suck. They they hire the ex American gladiators and Nitro and Pyro and them. Um, if uh. So <laughs> I want to go back to the question. If they did, <laughs> if they quizzed you and they took your inventory of you, <laughs> where are you? <laughs> What's your points? How many points do you have? I just want to know how many points you have. That's all I, I want to know. I personally don't remember. I'm. Uh, oh come on. Was, no, this was done in uh, July. I really don't remember what my points were. Maybe but, around where, like. But I know I've complied to about fifty percent of their stuff, to where I'm going to keep my insurance. So all I need is now. Insurance? Yes, I, that's what I'm fucking telling you. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't understand. So you're saying if you lose points, they can actually drop you just? Yes. Man, see, well, you know, they're gonna they're gonna do this for a while. I mean, because I didn't know about this, but I don't know how long that's gonna last. Because like I told you, they just put that other law in effect. They're gonna make another law about this because they're gonna I say, think, "Hey, you can't I just draw that, people." Yeah, I think they're gonna stop it once somebody screw, uh, sues for discrimination. I think that's what's gonna happen because we're in the sue happy state of California. I can already see somebody wanting to get, or they get dropped, or their premiums get so low, and then they're like, "Well, if it wasn't for this, you know, I would have been able to do this and this and that." And then, bam, lawsuit. Well, you know, I mean, and multiple lawsuits. I guess that that would be my thing, my guess. That, that that reminds me back to the times when um. <laughs> Airlines uh, were gonna. Were, well, they did. They started charging two seats for people that were obese, and people were just in an uprage. Of course, that was a little different. But I'm saying right away, people were gonna be like, "Hey, wait a second, because that is discrimination. It's discrimination yeah. against a person's size and a weight." And you know, uh, man, that's you're talking about the government telling you to get insurance. This is insurance telling you how to live your life. <laughs> yeah, it's you basically. Can't, you can't drink Rolling Rock because it doesn't comply with our calorie standards. It's like they're going to put a little monitor, a little chip in you, Hector, and they're going to say, oh, you can only eat 2,000 calories. Oh, you went over. Sorry. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it. You lost a half a point. <laughs> yeah. do, do they give you any kind of incentive like to like get healthy before they drop you? Or like do, would they pay for your gym membership or something? They ain't, they're not going to fucking pay for shit. <laughs> no? <laughs> Just, no. You yeah, your incentive, your incentive is, is I think you get like a fucking lunch pail with something saying, good job, you're eating healthy. I don't fucking know what they give you. I think it's, <laughs> I think it's fucking bullshit. Bag of carrots. <laughs> yeah, a bag of fucking carrots. <clears throat> yeah, we're, we're going to charge you a little less on your deductible. Thank you. That's like uh, when you when you get a car insurance and they're like, oh, you're a straight-A student. Good job. We're going to lower your deductible. <laughs> so. Yeah. Little do they know that little Susie's fucking her teacher to get that straight-A, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and Hector's throwing up his lunch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> where's uh, Where's Hector? Oh, it's about that time. We just had lunch, right? Yeah, he's in the restroom. <laughs> I was like, fuck, I lost like 50 pounds, and all I had to do is drink a lot of Direx and throw up every day. Well, Hector, uh, it looks like you're complying with our weight standards. Uh, you're an exceptional uh, man. They really like, put you as a role model. <laughs> but like, they're like, but those times you went to the hospital because the acid in your stomach and you being bulimic, <laughs> we're gonna have to fucking deduct you for those. Yeah, it's a tough one, buddy. So I don't know. <laughs> you, yeah. oh, sorry, your insurance doesn't cover psychologists. <laughs> so, okay. Oh, you have my insurance plan. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, your teeth are all rotten. Oh, sorry, you don't got dental, do you? <laughs> oh yeah, my fucking dental now is like ten dollars more, and I have two fucking kids, so it's thirty dollars more out of my paycheck every paycheck because they increase the dental, they increase the vision, and I can't be like the fucked up parent where like, well, you're gonna have to go fucking blind because I don't want to buy your fucking vision plan, you know? So yeah, it, it's. It's rough. It, I think 
as as shit happens bad, they people don't. I don't think insurance companies or they don't want to know that we're already fucking. Everybody's barely fucking making it, and yet they're making it even harder for us to make it. I mean, you think about it. Every paycheck, I used to pay like one hundred twenty-one dollars, and now I'm paying almost two hundred dollars. You know, there's a huge fucking gap of money that's going just on fucking an insurance plan that's worse than what it was when I was paying less. See, but you just said it right, right there, and that's what you know. That's the only thing that I, I'm just saying. Put the blame where it belongs. You said it's the insurance companies. Yeah, and I, then your, your your insurance company's definitely doing that. Like you know, like they're totally trying to screw you now. And, I, and you know, they were screwing you before. They were, you know, now they're just screwing you up the ass. It's just a little different. <laughs> so basically, you can and say all I want to know is who's got their hand on the handle. No, wait. <laughs> You're saying now, basically, I'm getting a free colonoscopy yearly by my insurance. That's right, because that that goes to your point system, and they want to know <laughs> whether you got good points or bad points. They got to check you out. <laughs> Hector, you don't think it would be better, it, honestly, if the government ran insurance companies? Like, fuck no. Why can't they just? Really? Yeah, I I don't think so either. Because you know, I mean, they do have an insurance company. Is it Medi-Cal? Yeah, and, and we we can't say that that's any better. That shit fucking. Well, sucks. no, it's not. It's not any better, but maybe like a like a pay one. Like why, why does it cost three thousand dollars to see a doctor? Like when the doctor maybe gets three hundred dollars of that, and the hospital gets the rest. Insurance. Exactly. Yeah, or yeah. whatever. Because the insurance hardballs and hardballs the hospitals too. That's the one thing that people don't understand is like when when you get your pain say. People go to the hospital and shit, and they're like, "Oh, it's a three thousand dollar fucking hospital bill. What the fuck did the doctor do? What did this, this, and this, that? No, your fucking insurance didn't want to pay for it, and so they left you responsible. It's not the doctor who charged you. I mean, people don't understand like, <clears throat> it's the quality of care. So some people like, I'll, I'll say like, well, I was only there for fucking twenty minutes, and the doctor was not even there for three minutes. But the doctor's not charging you for those three minutes that he saw you. The doctor's charging you for the lab results that he had to see on you. The 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 synopsis and all the stuff that he had to really think that was going with you. So even if he was there for you for just three minutes to give you an answer, he still was in the back figuring out what was wrong with you, reading those readings, getting the EKGs. <clears throat> and what a lot of people don't understand now is that hospitals are broke. A lot of hospitals, Cuya Delta, um, Kaiser, Fresno, all those, they don't own their own fucking radiology machines. It's another company. So they, they can't even afford their their equipment. They, they're they renting it out. A lot of in hospitals are renting it out because insurances don't pay for shit anymore. And so they, they're they kind of like at the wit's end of it too where they're like, well, that's why a lot of people, you'll see a lot of hospitals, a lot of clinics now, a lot of private offices will accept Medi-Cal. And a lot of people remember in the back in the days, you know, a private doctor would be like, oh, no, 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 you have fucking Medi-Cal. You can't yeah. come to my office. You have to go over there. And a lot of them are doing it. Why? Because it's a bet. You, you get a better tax write-off from the government than what you would get getting it from fucking private, trying to fight your private insurances for it. It's it's the fucking insurances. I agree with you. Well, but I mean, this, this even started, you know, uh, I mean, if, if we're going to start with the problem, I, I have to say this probably started back in – in the early 90s when they wanted to start doing the MMA, M M HMO plans and the PPO plans. I was like, don't get the MMA involved in this. The MMA had nothing to do with it. Not the MMA. It's not fucking Dana White. It's wrong wrong, yeah. wrong acronym. HMO. <laughs> I was trying to remember what the hell it's called. And PPO. Um, it's been a long time since I had insurance. But, you know, as, as a kid, I remember we had private insurance. Um, and we could go to whatever doctor we wanted. That was one of the, like I said, that was one of the things that my dad, had a, as a, a job security, good pay, and benefits to support his family. And then one day, we walk into our doctor's office, and he says, um, "I'm sorry, I can't see you guys." And we're like, "What are you talking about?" And he goes, "That that's it. Like you know, uh, the insurance has just changed everything. They have revolutionized so they can make more money on their end by doing this whole HMO and the PPO." So we're like, okay, well, what do we have? Well, we have PPO. Okay, let's pick a doctor. And then we have it. And then all of a sudden, his company changes it. You know, um, they have a union and everything, and they're fighting for them, but they're like, we're not going to pay for this expensive insurance anymore. You guys all got HMO. So it's like, man, we just got downgraded again. It's like, you keep on downgrading. We can't even go to the doctor 
that was my childhood. You know, like when you see in the, the old movies or the old TV shows, like you go to that one doctor and he knows the whole family and he knows everything and he treats everybody. That's the way it was until one day I was just like, who do I got to see? And then like I got separated from my parents and from everyone else and I had my own doctor and I was like, and every time I went, it was a different damn doctor. <laughs> they took you away from your parents? They did. It was kind of scary. <laughs> the insurance did this. I blame in the insurance. That's why I have a. I, I hate the insurance. They took me away from my parents. They separated me, and 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 I was just lost out there in the world. And um, and and Jesus brought me like back. That, that story, an American Tale, with Fievel, <laughs> was separated from his parents. <laughs> it did. It was. Is this an American story? I am an American. <laughs> Who do you think this is? I mean, I'm an American. This so is like a, somebody a, get this fucking HMO motherfucker out of here. <laughs> to the right place. <laughs> Where am I, Mom? Where is my dad? And it was it was frightening. It was scary. Um, you know, and, and but I just that's what I'm saying, like insurances have been been doing this for a long time and, and um they're always trying to find a different way to screw people over. I guess they got the point system where if you don't lose twenty pounds by, by March of next year, you're gonna start paying Obamacare, buddy. <laughs> You better I mean, cut down on that rolling rock and start eating some more tofu. <laughs> how come nobody regulates this? Well, how come how come the government can't regulate it? Like you can't charge somebody five thousand dollars to get stitches. Why can't why can't they do that? Is it because of capitalism? Like yeah, capitalism. Yeah, it, Victor, you watched our show so many times. You should know. <laughs> <laughs> the like, fucking government is run by corporations. I mean, they're not going to tell you. You know, they're not going to tell you, oh, we'll help you out. They're like, um, KFC has really said that we shouldn't get involved with this shit because they're making money, and if we're <laughs> caught with them and your fucking cholesterol's up, it, that shit doesn't fucking look good for us. Yeah, I mean, you have to remember, that's why, the, and Hector's right, the FDA, that's a huge one, and that's why I always get pissed off. The FDA will not regulate a lot of the stuff that's there because they'll end up talking about... Um, uh, FDA always puts, um, you know, it says it's not FDA certified, or they don't get involved in certain foods when they should, because certain foods are bad or certain things are bad, and that's when states have to take. I mean, California's strict as hell. Like I don't know if you, like you know, um, a few years back when California banned all trans fats in restaurants, so they can't serve you like manteca. It's illegal if somebody what? tries to cook you lard. Yeah, it's, this is. A, I, did you know this? This is. This is a few years back, and if it's it's in a restaurant because restaurants are no longer allowed to serve any kind of trans fats because they just know it's bad. You know, I mean, we also have um, stricter C CO two emissions. You know, for any kind of cars and vehicles in California. I mean, and it has to become a state thing. I mean, you know, because Hector and I have talked about half the people like on FDA, you know, the Food Drug and Administration. They're also board members of some them. Drug company or food company? Yum, Monsanto, yes. McDonald's, uh, everything. Yeah. yeah, they are. But uh, going back to uh, uh, Victor's question of why don't they have their own insurance company, and here's a great example. Dude, they do got their own company. It's called the United States Postal Service. Now, now I'll tell you right now, the United States Postal Service is not doing as good as FedEx or UPS, and that's their own company. And they're not, it's not going anymore, you know? I mean, they have to restructure everything because when everybody else is, like, you know, trying to make money and stuff, well, guess who? Somebody has got to be, hey, like, you know, we don't want you guys doing too good because you're going to put us out of business. I mean, and now, I don't know if you heard the latest news, but even Amazon's trying to jump into it. And they want to start doing their own uh, uh, courier service because they're already shipping everything out. And they got enough money now. They got enough power where they're like, okay, we're going to start small so this way we can cut that middleman out. Why do we got to pay UPS or United States Postal Service when we can just ship that stuff out ourselves and have other people pay us to ship other things out? So that's the new thing that Amazon wants to be doing. Doesn't UPS want to implement drones as well to do uh, carry uh, drop-offs as well? Uh, drop-offs, yeah. Huh? Amazon wants to do that. Amazon wants to do Yeah, they have, they have these drones. <clears throat> they're a prototype right now, but they say they want to start as early as 2015. Uh, I don't know. It looks kind of scary. And then, do you think Google will get involved and bring that fucking cheetah to bring your shit to, or what? <laughs> now the cheetah's gonna take those drones them. down. It's gonna attack them. <laughs> but can you imagine all the the hillbillies? You know, they see a drone flying. They'll just pull out their shotgun and 
shoot out the sky, they got a free PS3 with some bullet holes, maybe. <laughs> what are you talking about? Tea party people. <laughs> tea party. Anybody. <laughs> That's just a common criminal, man. <laughs> We're going to hijack hey, you, that drone. Would you be convicted for shooting down a drone thinking it could have been something else? A UFO or something or what? Yeah. What if you're really fucking baked in the middle of the day? We are, the we're not, not going to go into your UFO conspiracies right now. <laughs> this, is, this is not the podcast for this. You, uh, said, you said we were going to create our own separate channel for the UFO stuff. <laughs> I'm just saying if people are <laughs> no, no. UFOs, I'm not saying that UFOs are real. I'm just I know, I know Ancient Aliens just came out with a brand new season. No, but wouldn't you be freaked, <laughs> wouldn't you be freaked the fuck out if the first time you ordered something from Amazon and some fucking little thing is coming towards your house and you don't you're not expecting a drone to fucking drop it off? Wouldn't you be a little fucking terrified? Um, you know, it's a like you said, it's a prototype. I don't think it's gonna work like that. And by the time it actually does come to your house or my house, it, it's gonna be we're gonna see it all the time in the air. It's not gonna be it's gonna be second nature. If I see one of those things coming to my house, the first thing I'm going to do is delete my history from my computer. <laughs> <laughs> Are you, you're going to disconnect yourself from the internet. No, I'm just thinking, wondering if maybe it's like a fucking government shit coming. In. Yeah, I don't know. Fucking, that's Man, fucking crazy shit. You know, I, I was telling Juan earlier, I go, with as many podcasts as we've done already, and Hector always picking these crazy topics, I'm surprised they were not flagged for the FBI, and they come knocking on my door. I'm gonna rat them out. <laughs> I'm gonna say, Jeff Hector, he's, he's over there. He's the one who's getting me involved in this stuff. <laughs> Why are you taking me for life in prison for talking about Obamacare? <laughs> They're like, how no, you because gonna, you, you're you pro Obamacare. How are you gonna <laughs> rat me out? It was all your idea. <laughs> <laughs> Everything. And it looks like Victor just disconnected, so he didn't want to be involved in this. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's bullshit. Bro. Say, God, I, would, I wouldn't fucking rat you out. Yet you're gonna rat me out. <laughs> I wanted to talk about the PlayStation Four. <laughs> no, we're gonna talk about it. In fact, here's the last word for Obamacare. Uh, my personal point of view is: if you're gonna get insurance and you don't have insurance, read very carefully what you're gonna get. Make sure that you know what your co deductibles, what your what your Coinsurance is, and is it actually worth you getting that private insurance? If no, go find another one with a cheaper deductible coinsurance. That's all I'm saying is know what you're getting yourself into. Look it up. Read the papers. Just don't sign anything just because you're desperately seeking insurance. And for people that wonder how the government's going to know who gets who get who gets insurance and who doesn't, fucking people, it's called income tax. When you turn in your <laughs> tax forms. Your insurance information's on there, so if you don't have in insurance information, that's how they're gonna get you. Damn. There you go. I don't Bet know. You is this it. is this a thumbs up or is it thumbs down? Uh, it's like one and up on this podcast. Right. Is it? <laughs> so for the next part, I'm gonna. You're not gonna see me on the screen that much. We're gonna go talk about PlayStation Four. That just. Where are you going? And Xbox One, that's why Victor's here. We're going to do a comparison and <clears throat> see what you guys think. I'm not a console guy. Um, I try to be, but I broke a lot of controllers, and I don't have fucking... <laughs> I'm an angry fucking gamer, so <laughs> it's not good for me. All right. Well, before we do that, I wanted to mention something real quick about um, about uh, Instagram. Uh, both of you guys have Instagram, right? Yes. You both use it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you guys get the recent update? That's all over. And have you seen the the new the new update that they have with Instagram? I just agreed to it. Did you Did you not even read what the hell it was? Of course not. I'm fucking Mexican. I oh, man, I should just use it on you right now. Like I could take a I could take a penis shot and send it to you, and it'll disappear in like two seconds, and you won't even know what the hell you saw. <laughs> and you're but the you, only one who can see it. But you always send me penis shots. Yeah, <laughs> but this, but not through text messages. This time, it, it'll disappear. <laughs> so you're saying anything inappropriate now is going to be taken off? No, no, no. What it is is it's it's a direct channel, right? So so um so Instagram has uh called something called Insta Insta Direct or Instagram Direct or some crap like that. So now you can choose to send a photo to just a few select people or one person rather than everybody, right? So everybody can see it. It's like a text message. It's like Snapchat. 
It's like Snapchat, and that's exactly why I wanted to mention this. Because you and I don't. Because I, I was thinking about this the other day. I was like, why the hell did they make this useless update? Because everybody was upset about it, and it's and for me, it's just like, man, they already put the stupid ads on on Instagram, and now they're doing this to Instagram. I was like, this is becoming like a worse uh, app, you know? Like, why do I want this? And of course, who owns Instagram? It's Facebook. And did you not read about the the article when Facebook was trying to buy out Snapchat? No. Yeah. So, so Facebook was trying to buy out. Uh, well, do you remember Victor? Then what? Oh, how long ago was this? Um, two three weeks maybe uh, that I remember hearing it. Yeah. Do Do you know how much it was? I think they offered them three billion, and Snapchat declined it. Yeah. Basically, Snapchat was like, "Now nah, up yours, Facebook. We don't want to do it." You know, and they, yeah, they were, they declined them. They're like, we're not gonna. I thought it was like twelve billion, but I could be wrong. I thought it was about twelve that they offered them. Uh, and Snapchat's like, no. And and Facebook is trying to gobble up any kind of competitor, right? Like Instagram, they they got that to combat. Um, and they did Insta Video to combat Twitter, who has Vine. And um, so they wanted Snapchat because they see that this is an up and coming app. So to combat Snapchat, what do they do? They put an Instagram Direct on Instagram. But I was like, but why? If there is already something there, Snapchat. You know, and it just seems dumb. Like you know, and I understand exactly what Facebook was doing. I don't know if people really saw it. Like you know, what was going on? I just thought it was a bunch of bull. Um, and you know, and Facebook's pissed off because they can't believe that they got declined. I mean, that's a lot of money, <laughs> and the app really isn't worth that much. The Snapchat, but the people feel like it's their property and it is worth a lot to them. So they're like, nah, Facebook, you know, up yours. Like, we don't gotta listen to you. So yeah. I don't know. Snapchat's the greatest greatest place to just do a random dick pic, and you don't have to worry about it being <laughs> fucking anywhere for a little bit. <laughs> so, Hector knows this <laughs> from personal yeah. experience. I'm a single guy. I get bored. I'd be like, hey, you want to see something awesome? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. Love you. <laughs> 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 oh man, what was this? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'll fucking do dick pics, or maybe not. <laughs> but if you want to Snapchat them, you can do it at Screaming Rebel. No, I don't know. Do we have it? Is there I have a Snapchat? Snapchat. Yeah, I uh, let me see what my Snapchat is. I made one the other day in my drunken frenzy. Uh, I don't remember what it is either. <laughs> we all got it, but we don't know the fucking names that we're using. I think I mentioned this before on the podcast. Did I tell you that I'm a social butterfly when I get drunk? No. Are you sure? I, I did some crazy. I do some crazy. Anytime I get drunk, um, I uh, <laughs> I always get the the strong urge to start blogging. Or you know, people do like the drunk texting. Not me. I just do drunk statuses. I do. And, and drunk oh, comments. I'll get drunk and you'll see pictures on Instagram of fucking beer bottles and shit like that. Yeah, I do see that. That kind of gets boring. All right, so for people that want to <laughs> friend me on Snapchat and get uh, random dick pics throughout the day, uh, username is Ima SRP. So I M M A S R P. And I can see Victor's already adding me, so he can get the random dick pic. I'll get the day. first dick pic. <laughs> <laughs> my, the first. Mine is a uh, zombies v robots. It's pretty simple. I don't, I I don't have that. Snapchat. I gotta. I gotta get that. Oh no, oh. you're you're a Facebook lover. That's why you have Insta Direct. <laughs> yeah, I'm always on Facebook or Twitter sometimes. I like Twitter. I like fucking add people on Snapchat. Yeah, Twitter's cool. Um, it's more like for networking, or or it seems it's more for like interests than friends and family. So I have a lot of gaming news on that. Yeah, I do. I do. Um, I have a. Uh, Shoot, I'm trying to remember the company that does Borderlands. Oh, uh, Gearbox. Yeah, because uh, a, a, any Borderlands fans out there know that um, they have there's golden keys, especially in uh, oh, it's in Borderlands 2, where they made these boxes, and you have to get these. You can pay for them in in-game currency, um, you know, which has you real world value. But Gearbox will occasionally uh, release codes on. And they do it on Facebook also, but it's easier to see it on Twitter because they, they do Twitter a lot. Gearbox, and they'll um, release codes to either download new skins um, or the golden keys for Valentine's Day. They they release like an awesome weapon and and I tell you, brand new skins and um, so they're really good with that. They're really into it. Um, there's a lot of gamers that do that, especially like when E3 and stuff are going up. Uh, <laughs> I have my. My computer on, and then I have my phone on for the Twitter feed because I want to. I'm looking at all the 
the videos for, for E3 and all the things that are coming out and the Twitter feeds because everybody's blowing it up of what's happening and what's amazing. All right. So do you guys want to talk about your guys' uh, little expensive toys that you guys recently got? Uh, George is busy doing a Snapchat of his uh, <laughs> right now. Surprise, Hector. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Now's yes. not the Ever. time for the pee. Um, Real friends share dick pics. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, hey, buddy, that doesn't look healthy. You might have to go see a doctor. <laughs> I wouldn't be sharing that. Which so, like George, you got the PlayStation 4, right? And the PlayStation 4 released one week before the Xbox One. I did get the PlayStation 4. Um, so, f so far, I am... Um, Shit, somebody added me on Snapchat. I have, oh, well, I, di I did. That's right. In my drunken frenzy, I told people to Snapchat me. <laughs> okay, wait. Tell me tell me what your Snapchat is real quick. Uh, I-M-M-A-S-R-P. Okay. Why are you you're so cryptic with your... That stands for MMA and then Screaming Rebels Podcast. Yeah. International... MMA. Multi-mass... MMA means mixed martial arts. Something like that. Screen Rose Paul Cat. Okay, got it. <laughs> I just added you. There you go. Alright. Um, I did. I got my PS4 <clears throat> and uh and <laughs> I I love the way it runs. I I'm gonna say I, I had to say I guess the first disappointment that I had. The first disappointment I had was that I felt like there was no games that were tailored to me that I wanted. So was, it's it's one of those things where it's a disappointment because it's like I could have waited to get this PlayStation 4 instead of trying to get it the first day, which I did, and I went to the midnight release, and there was a long line. The GameStop that I went to actually had a few extra. People were buying them right then because they said other GameStops and Walmart and Target and all of them were already sold out. Um, the GameStop I happened to go to, they normally don't sell out of a lot of things. The other day I went, and they still had PS4s. So... <laughs> I, I guess I should say which GameStop it is. If anybody's interested in trying to find a, a PS4 and they can't find one, um, it, it, they definitely can in, the, in Fresno. It's on Sean Phelan. But when I got it, and the reason why I say it, I was disappointed because um, I was going to get Killzone, and Killzone got a lot of bad reviews. And, and I looked it up again. There's, I looked at the, ga the, the play and stuff, and uh, there's still a lot of bad reviews. It looks beautiful, but every game so far that I've seen on, on the PS4 has looked beautiful. Um, and then I was going to buy Drive and Drive Club. And Drive Club was pushed back. So it was supposed to be released, and it, it's not released now until another couple months. Then I was going to get Watch Dogs. <laughs> Watch Dogs was offered as a bundle package, and Watch Dogs, of course, is also a cross-platform, so it's going to be on the Xbox One um, and even the PS3, I believe, and the uh, Xbox 360. But they, find a, they found a major glitch, and that's not coming out to 2014 also. So in the end, all I ended up getting was all these uh, um, indie games. <laughs> so all I've been playing on my PlayStation 4 is indie games. Um, Those downloadable content ones, the ones that you get from the from the online store. Yeah, so I got free ones that that uh, um, they that they gave you from day one, which PlayStation is is great for. Um, Xbox has been trying to do that. They've been trying to do that with the 360. I want to say maybe the past six months or so by offering free games. But PlayStation has been awesome about it. Like PS3. The PlayStation Network just offered Borderlands 2 for free last month, and it was Grid 2 than a month before. And I've been downloading every single one ever since uh, Malika got me an upgraded hard drive for my PS3. It's 500 gigabytes now. And my PS4 is the same. It's 500 gigabytes. And the software it's running, the hardware, everything runs super smooth. Like, I can go in and out. I'll be playing a game and think, I want to share this. And I do, and I bring, and I, I haven't been ashamed to do it. I'll just click the share button, which they show just like on TV. You click the share button, and in it pops, and it's like, uh, and it shows the last 15 minutes that you've been playing, and you can r choose to show everything or just a little piece that you thought was cool. And I'll go and I'll edit it and put like maybe three, four minutes, and then you just title it, and then you put a comment on it, and then it pushes it on a uh, Facebook. So so far, all it's doing is just posting to Facebook. Um, you can also do the live stream on Twitch. I got a Twitch account for it. I haven't had a chance to use it yet. Um, I was going to the other day, and I just got lazy. I just ended up just uploading the video instead. But um, So the Twitch thing is cool because you can do a Let's Play. So on the Let's Play, it's just you know like this. I could put my headset on, and I could talk while I'm doing it, and people can just watch, uh, which people already do all the time on YouTube. I mean, I do that. I, I love Let's Plays, and I'll go check them out. Um, it's a great way to see new games and 
uh, you know, check them out and see how you like them. All so right. my big downfall is, is the games. Um, I know Victor got the Xbox One, and, <clears throat> you know, uh, they got, well, I thought Rise of, uh, what is it, uh, Fall of Rome or Son of Rome. It, it was going to be a lot better, but that got some pretty bad reviews too. So I, I didn't feel too bad, but Forza motor, Motorsport looks beautiful, and I tell you, Drive Club hasn't come out yet. Gran Turismo came out uh, 6, but you can get that for the PS3. Actually, I think it's only released for the PS3 because they, they didn't get to make all the changes for the PS4 yet. All right. So let's go to Victor. Victor, what's your big and he's going to give us his thoughts. Uh, did, did you do the whole midnight thing, or how did you get your Xbox One? Uh, it's it's kind of tough to get time off of work, so I didn't do the midnight release, but I did do the day one release. So pretty much um, I just waited till they uh, delivered it to my house. And uh, what Xbox did was kind of cool. They did a, like a day one release, so it's, it's kind of like a limited edition console um, <clears throat> that says day one on it and, and it, it's kind of like you know you were the first one to, to get it. Um, when I pre-ordered mine I did it through Microsoft Store and they were the only ones that had those left otherwise I would have to just get a, a regular one and uh, so that's, that's the real reason I didn't really uh, do the minute release but uh, it's, it's a good machine I mean um, I think the PlayStation 4 is it's supposed to be a little bit more powerful as far as graphical and and their uh, processing power, but uh, a lot of people say it's it's pretty similar. Um, the interface is is good, but I don't think they fully reach their potential. Uh, it's got a lot of pluses where you can switch between live TV, uh, your game, uh, music, um, the Xbox live store uh, so it's got potential that hasn't been fully met, um, met yet I think uh, the big downside for me is they took away the Xbox live store for whatever reason um, so if all the games that you've been able to purchase whether it be indie or major releases that got downloadable Pretty much, they're gonna stay stuck on your 360, which, which is like my biggest uh, downfall, the of the, of the system. Um, another thing I don't like is Xbox 360 was fantastic as far as party chat. Like, like let's say me, you, and George all had 360s. We wanted to just talk to each other, and. Uh, go ahead and, and play Borderlands 2 or something. We could do that on 360 no problem easily. Like it, it's, There's not even a learning curve. You just press like three buttons and we're all in the same party. With Xbox One, it's it's pretty difficult. Like You can't, you can't do that. I couldn't figure out how to do it. Uh, I don't even know if it's available. So the, the online experience took took a hit as well. Uh, other than just you know not being able to play my uh, arcade games on it, um, I only have uh, Call of Duty Ghosts for it right now. Um, I got the Prestige Edition. I kind of regret regret it, but I bought it because it came with an HD camera, and I was gonna take it out with me and George going on our bikes. Uh, but we haven't been able to do it yet. So maybe when I take it out, it'll be worth it. But. Um, there, there isn't really any must-haves right now. I don't think till Titanfall comes out that I'm gonna have a, a must-have game. That's you know, and and I totally agree with him because Titanfall is probably the number one. That one and Killer Instinct are the two games that everybody's talking about for the Xbox One. Um, yeah. Man, they just they just released more footage on the Titanfall. Have you seen it, Victor? With the new mechs? Yeah. The, the org? Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> yeah, that that I mean that the game from from you know beginning to end looks awesome. I just got the the last uh, Game Informer and um, Destiny's on the cover, and I'm excited for that game, which is gonna come out um, in the middle of 2014. Um, and of course, that's gonna be cross platform, so I'm definitely gonna get that for the PS4. <laughs> um, but that one is another game that looks beautiful. Is Destiny? Have, and Hector, you have to see some of these games. I yeah, mean, I know De Destiny is the one that now that. Uh 
that the Bungie people have kind of disparted from uh, Halo. This is kind of their new game. Um, am I close to hitting a home run on that one? <laughs> yeah, I think right? they are made by Bungie. You're, you're, you're close to hitting a, uh, getting a first base. Yeah, you're, you're close. Yeah, no, I don't know about a home run. Let's, don't get carried yeah. away here. <laughs> All right, everybody gets lucky, but... No, um, uh, the only reason why I say it, um, the, the Halo games are actually owned by Microsoft. Now, Bungie created them, you're right, but they have no rights to them. So that's why Halo's, because uh, the last Halo game was already made by 343 uh, Industries, which yeah. is a, a game a studio from Microsoft. So Microsoft has already put a Halo game without Bungie. That's the first game. And they're going to continue. They've already said they're going to continue the franchise um, still and make more Halo games without them. And Bungie, they did go off, and I think they redid their contract so they can make sure they keep the rights to whatever game they have. And um, this time, I think they went with, is it Activision? It's, it says it's also the company that brought you um, the Call of Duty games. Is it Activision that does that, Victor? Activision does Call of Duty. Yeah, so then Activision is, is who uh, Bungie teamed up with them, and that's why they're getting also so much, um, you know, uh, it seems like sponsors and ads and... I mean, it, it's all over the place. And that one's... A, I'm, I'm excited to read the article. I haven't had a chance to read it. It's like 14 pages. But uh, that's another game that looks beautiful and looks like they've really done a great job very close to, like, you know, the way Titanfall is. Something so massive. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm excited about that. Uh, for the PS4, I mean, there's a lot of games I'm excited for. They're just not out yet. Uh, Infamous, yeah. Second Son. I don't know if, if Victor's seen that one, but I, I loved all the, the Infamous franchise, and they're really good and creative. Um, and the graphics for that one, the second son, looks like it's going to be just as good, and the storyline just as well. I, I've never played uh, Infamous, because I was telling Hector before the show started, um, my PS3... You guys are talking without me? <laughs> sorry, sorry to break the news to you on live. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's how it is, Hector. Okay, I see. It's not like that, because I actually sent you an invite, so you could have... Uh, Started the same conversation as lot when you accepted it, but you decided to just slack off for a couple more minutes, and that's what happens. Yeah, that's what happens. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So no, you were telling uh, Hector. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was telling Hector my PS3 uh, just sat there and played Blu-ray movies for me. Um, <laughs> I didn't. I couldn't get into the online experience. The games. I, I feel like I'm more of a social gamer. Like, I can't sit there and play um, even, like, the best games, even, like, Bioshock. I can't sit there and play Bioshock for three, four, five, six hours. I, I, I only could play it for an hour, an hour and a half at the most, and then I want social interaction. So I need – I like games like Call of Duty so where I can just go online, kill – kids or, you know, whatever, kill people. Yeah, we, we, we don't you know want to talk about killing I, kids. Not really killing kids, but, you know, I get I get to shoot uh, real people that are on, on the other end of... Real people? <laughs> he gets to shoot real people yeah. now. <laughs> you guys going to edit my, uh, <laughs> my comments and send it to my work? No, no it's not. live! <laughs> Why edit it? I'm going to them this way. So Victor <laughs> likes to go online and find people and kill the kids and the people that he finds online. Is that what I is that what Real I got people. from it so far? Real people. Real I, people. I can't yes. I can't do the whole just you know the the artificial intelligence. It just doesn't do it for me. Yeah, I, I like I, knowing that there's. What's that? I like artificial intelligence because I played a couple times. I played Call of Duty and shit like that and go online, and the only thing I get is, die, motherfucker, and then I get shot. So I actually play myself. <laughs> when I play this game, kind of games, I end up being the fucking mouse and not the cat, running for fucking dear life, hoping nobody's going to catch me. <clears throat> you, I've been gaming uh, on the 360 since, almost since it came out. I was a little behind the curve, so I know exactly how you felt, because I felt the same way in my first Call of Duty. I mean, uh, people would literally like say, "What? I, what am I doing playing? Like, what? Like, what the fuck are you doing even playing? Like, turn your F Xbox off and go kill yourself." <laughs> and uh, I, so I remember, I remember all that. And now, you know, three, four Call of Duties in, 
I'm pretty decent, so I like to go on there and, and just, you know, just snipe people or kill people. So do you tell those people the same thing as well, or what? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not that big. <laughs> Die, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm not that big of a douche. So but, what, what basically I'm hearing from both of you guys is you guys like the system, the graphics-wise. You guys are just disappointed on the game release that they have for it. And that's that's probably with all early uh, adopters. You know, that there's not going to be a real big um, library right at launch. And I think this launch was rushed. Uh, I think Nintendo and Sony kind of pushed it because although the, so the PS3 probably sold well, I don't think it ever caught up to the Xbox 360. So it's like who's ever first to market is going to win the console war. Which, which that's what they're after. Uh, the 360 had a whole year, I believe, on the PS3, so uh, Sony definitely wanted to be uh, the Xbox One. So it, it felt, this generation feels like a rushed. Um, that's why they haven't, you know, dotted their I's and crossed their T's when it came to the online experience, especially with the Xbox. Um, me and George are going to set up a date where, you know, he brings his PS4 over and we'll just have like a like a gaming session here at the at the house. Um, that sounds romantic. Yeah, it's gonna be. Oh, uh, <laughs> you're not you're not invited. That's Mr. all right. Talk yeah. behind my back. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the mistress between both of you. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, I mean, yeah. I, even, who's, even the who's Snapchatting now. <laughs> is it is it is it George's Don Quixote mustache that attracts you to him? <laughs> <laughs> or is it my my wonderful attire. It's, I'm not, it's a I'm sense not, of fashion. You look like a fucking village person with that mustache, George. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm his knight in shining armor. That's what I am. That looks like the Hannibal Lecter mask almost. <laughs> looks like a Transformer, like the Transformer beanie. No, see, I'm supposed to be his knight oh, in shining armor. Oh, it is a knight. Armor. Okay, now I see it. No, you look like, uh, what's that Looney Tunes character? The, Marvin the Martian? Yeah, Marvin the Martian. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was green. He was a Martian. <laughs> Everybody knows this is shining armor. It's shining. It's not shining. It's made out of wool. <laughs> Whatever. I'm about to leave this conversation. <laughs> um, the and we do a and I no we do, I wanted I definitely want to check out the the Xbox One. I want to play Killer Instinct. And did did you play it already? Because you can download that for free, right? And I think you get like one or two characters. Yeah, you get one character, um, and I think just like limited, uh, I don't know, limited uh, ways to play. But I ended up buying the whole game, so I, I do have the whole game if you want to try it out. It do actually like is a it? cool game. I like I like that one actually more than uh, Call of Duty. Um, but it, you know, I I played online. I'm not that good at it, but uh, it is it does look really good. It's it's really well made. It's, it's real similar to the Street Fighter 4, which was really uh, made well as well. Um, it's a pretty good game. I have a question for you. How do you like the new controller? Because I heard they went with a different company. They didn't go with Logitech this time. Uh, I don't know who made it. It's, it's responsive. It's, it's a little more responsive when you're wireless, which is a plus. It just doesn't feel as comfortable as the 360 one. The 360, it just feels like it was made for your hands. Like, everything about it, it just feels perfect. Yeah, because I, I, lo I love Logitech. And um, when I had a, an Xbox back in the day, um, you know, uh, I had a Logitech wireless, and I, I loved the way uh, um, it felt. Like, that was my favorite part, the same thing. So when I knew they were doing the Xbox 360s controller, I knew they were going to do a great job. I heard that Microsoft uh, outsourced. They went with a different company this time to do the the controllers, and the the people who were doing it actually it was kind of funny. I, I read a an article online that they tried out a lot of different um, things in their prototypes. One of the things that they talked about wanting to put in the controller, and I, I have no idea what the use would be, but um, it was supposed to emit uh, a spray for your senses, nasal. You were supposed to be able to smell <laughs> stuff from your controller. For the Xbox One controller, I kid you not, that was and and it was talked about, and that was supposed to be one of the the things. Of course, I mean, for obvious reasons, we can all see that that would not be a really good uh, feature to have on your controller as a selling point. But um, 
but they were uh, they were doing a whole bunch of things. So the thing I can say about my PS4 controller is that um, I love it. And I do have to say the 360 controller always did feel a little better than my PS3. The PS3 you'd play for a while and it would and it would hurt your hands because it was so tiny. But this PS4, the way they widened it up, um, uh, they put the joysticks. Everything feels a, a lot better. The triggers, the R2 and L2, um, still aren't as large as I would like them, um, but they are definitely more responsive. And I know that that's um, what they listen to because everybody was saying, "Hey, man, you know, we like playing on Xbox because we would like playing shooters. We like playing Call of Duty or, or Modern Warfare. I mean, the Modern Warfare, or the you know, the the Black Ops series. And um, your triggers on the on the PlayStation aren't aren't the same, and they they redid them. And I have to say, like. This controller, and I've you know I've had Xbox friends who come over and they they play and they say that's one of the first things they say they go um, this actually feels good this is the first time a PlayStation controller feels good it probably even feels better than the Xbox one you know I've heard nothing but good things about the PS4 controller uh, so I don't doubt what you're saying um, the new one the new Xbox it's good. But I, I think the 360 is better. And most likely the PS4 controller is going to be better than this one. It's, I mean, it's not horrible. I just prefer the feel of the 360, which I think is probably the best controller ever made. Uh, again, that's without trying the PS4's controller. Um, yeah, no, this one I definitely love. The only uh, downside is, is the hours that I get on one of these is, is a, a lot less. So, I mean, I have to... Um, so, but I'm I'm constantly having to switch one out and recharge the other one or keep it plugged in while playing. And I've hear that the Xbox One controller, though, um, the way they designed it is is really unique because it senses like if you're watching Netflix or something, and it'll it'll turn itself off or put like a standby mode. So it will conserve energy. Uh, the Xbox One controller I hear can last hours. Um, some people say they they played it, you know, three four days, and and then they finally had to recharge it. You know, um, which to me is awesome. You know, because that's definitely not the case with mine. That's that's probably the only downside I have is is my battery life on my PS4. Yeah, the the Xbox. Um, I'm I'm actually on my first charge uh, <laughs> with the uh, rechargeable one, but I did go through a double A AA pair. Yeah. And I got I got a good eight hours of Call of Duty, and that's not including all of the time I was watching like Netflix. Um, or like uh, scrolling through the new uh, interface to see how you know what it's like. Yeah. Um. So I definitely got about probably about ten hours of use at least, probably at a minimum. Um. They need to do. They really need to do something with Xbox Live. I mean, I just can't f picture them just alienating their their fan base by. Getting rid of it completely. The only game that I have to choose to buy online for Xbox Live One are the ones that have been released, uh, like Dead Rising and all that. But as far as like arcadey games, is I think Peggle Two, um, <laughs> which is kind of fun. But I haven't bought it. Uh, <laughs> I've seen the, I've seen the trailer for that. It did look kind of fun, but it looks like a, a game that you might want to play on Facebook or something. Yeah, it's a little arcadey, but it, it it's kind of fun. So you could buy like the big name, like Call of Duty, uh, Forza, Madden. So the arcadey games they have are like Power Star Golf, uh, Peggle Two. They just released one called Max: The Curse of Brotherhood. I don't even know what that's one's, that one's about. Um, and that's it, really. So that I mean, there is there's no games right now. That's that's probably the, the worst part. I see. Like for me, it ties the opposite. I didn't buy no mainstream games like the Blockbuster, but they gave me Contrast for free, which wasn't as good as I thought it was gonna be. So I'm glad I got it for free. But I was gonna I was gonna buy it because I, I I thought the idea was good. Um, Riso Gun is a game that I love and I'm I'm constantly playing it. It's um, it's one of those uh. Man, I forgot what the name of them. Those like flight shooters, kind of like Galaga. Um, I've actually posted videos on my Facebook for that. Um, I I will play it for hours. I just like playing it. It's just uh, going around. It's like a new take on that, you know, whole Galaga. Um, you know, what was it Caterpillar? Like all those series, you know, from uh, Space Invaders, like back in the day. Yeah, and and I and I love it uh, to death. And then um, 
they had a whole bunch of other ones um, that you could play online, like that were first-person shooters. They had Warframe, they had Blacklight, Retribution, they had DC Online, um, and then they just released uh, Tiny Brains. Uh, I haven't got that yet, but I want to get that. That's a co-op game. I like getting. I love getting um, a co-op games. Um, so my girlfriend and I, we always get on, and then um, we'll play like you know whatever indie games. I actually got one called Super Motherload. I got it for the music. All you do is dig. You're in a little tiny um, <laughs> digger that goes down into the earth, and all you're doing is mining minerals. It sounds boring as hell, and it kind of is, but the music's cool, and it's pretty epic. So that's all we play for, just so we can hear the music while we're playing it. So they did a great job with the soundtrack on that. Um, and, and the good part is is what they're doing now with all the, the new releases, uh, with the majority of them, is they're, releasing, they're trying to release them on the PlayStation 4 pl uh, first, and then they it's a cross-buy a lot of times, so they'll give you the game so you can play on the PS3. So, like, I bought Super Motherload for my PS4, and it came out, like, I think it was, like, two weeks or maybe three weeks before the PS3. And then when it came out for the PS3, well, I just downloaded it again. Now I have it on both systems, whichever one I have on. Um, they both look good, you know. I mean, of course it looks better on the PS4 because it's in a 1080p. But I like, I like that fact that they're giving it to me first, like, you know, not because I have to be the first to get it, but I'm just saying, like, because I want to play it, and I'm like, oh, right, that's cool, I get to play this. You know, uh, my Tiny Brains. I've been wanting to play Tiny Brains. Um, I got to try out the demo. Octodad's going to be coming. Did you see the trailer for that? That's, like, a big one. Um, Octodad is a is a dad who's an octopus, and, and the controls are really weird, and you're trying to control all his limbs, so you're trying to make him walk around and to do everyday normal things, and it's difficult because he's an octopus, so you have to... You have to literally use every single button that's on the PS4 controller, and it's a unique game. And I just like, you know, when they announced at E3 that they're gonna really uh, gear towards the independent uh, developers, they really have so far. And I really do like all the the games that are that are gonna be coming out, you know, and all these different unique ideas. Um, to me, that seems to be where a lot of the innovation is. Uh, like I said, I'm excited for a few blockbusters. Um, the Order. 1886, but that's not coming out, I think, until 2015. And, you know, Infamous, um, as we, as I've said, and then, um, what was it? The Oh, Destiny, but that's going to be cross-platform, and Watch Dogs, that's cross-platform. Have you heard about that Tom Clancy one? Um, he died. Yeah. <laughs> I was, was going to say the same thing. Didn't he die? He just passed away, but he... Uh, he yeah, that game. but he yeah, made this game right before he he was dying and be like, "Here, <laughs> this is gonna be for the new console." <laughs> Ubisoft makes it. Um, they're actually pretty good. I think they're French. I'm not not completely sure. They do have a studio in France, I th so I think they might be half French. <laughs> oui, oui. Um, oh, you know, Ubisoft are they the ones who are putting out Dying Light? That's another one I'm excited for. The zombie game. Uh, they could be. They, they got actually. I'm I'm on their website now. They got actually quite a bit of games. I didn't know they did the Rocksmith games. Where you They're also coming play. out with the crew. The crew's that other driving game. The Division you... is the game I was talking about. That one looks really good. Yeah, you haven't seen anything about that one? No, I haven't seen the trailer for that. That one looks really good. Uh, actually, I don't think that's a Tom Clancy game, is it? Uh, it's going to be released for the PS4 and the Xbox One. Uh, I think it's something like a maybe a post-nuclear attack. Um, and I believe it's going to be set in New York City. And so it's kind of like everyone fend for yourself. So you probably make a clan and you could uh, raid like police stations for ammo and weapons. Uh, it looks really good. It looks really good. Uh, that I'm pretty excited for that one. I, I'm not sure on the release date on that one though. I'm on their website now. I'm trying to find out who did. I can't believe I'm drawing a blank for the dying light. And I was excited. Somebody told me about it, and I was like, ah, I didn't see that. So I came home. I I uh, I checked out the it's Warner Brothers. It's gonna be a Warner Brothers uh, game, Dying Light. Warner Brothers, of course, did all the the Batman games. What the hell is Hector showing us? Some jack-o'-lantern? Is that his butt? Where? On his video. Oh, that's a phone case, I think. Right? Oh, oh, I don't know. That's the same thing, <laughs> as far as I know. 
Is that... Hey, does this look like my butt, George? <laughs> Minus 10 points. <laughs> your insurance rate just went up. <laughs> yeah, your insurance rate just went up. Sorry. Yeah, you raised my blood pressure, so it's just... <laughs> Yeah, you can only see the doctor the once a month now. <laughs> I don't even go see the doctor. <laughs> well, I'm glad that one of us who can see the doctor chooses not to. <laughs> All right. I think we're going to wrap this one up. Um, like I said, our topic points for the show was Obamacare. And our thing is George and us are kind of, again, a, Go for it, but agree that all uh, insurance po uh, people are fucking greedy fucks. <clears throat> uh, we've talked about Xbox and PlayStation. Not enough game titles out yet. Um, Victor hates the fucking controller. Uh, he just <laughs> love with his controller. <clears throat> minus, minus, minus the, I guess, the how long the battery lasts in it. George, any upcoming shows? No, um, because that's part of one of the reasons why we haven't done Screaming Rebels is, one, um, <laughs> you didn't have internet access, and two, I don't have a car. <laughs> so <clears throat> I have not had any shows um, lined up. Um, we won't, but uh, Sci-Fi Caper is looking to try to head back into the studio, actually. Um, we want to record one of our friends is uh, does some pretty good stuff. The stuff that we had before, we just did in my garage. <laughs> And so now we're hoping to actually have something that sounds uh, more studio quality and release that. So we want to get all that stuff done with, and we're hoping to release a full um, LP with that. And then if we do, then we'll have a release show. And so um, we can book a show if we want to. We just haven't. Um, so we're looking at probably doing a show maybe, I don't know, or towards the end of January or February, depending on how soon we can get the, the recordings up and going. Um, then with with Kidship, we 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 need some practice. Uh, is still in, and we we haven't done any shows. Uh, that was probably my last show. Was with Kinship. Uh, we played at Frank's place in Fresno. That went over pretty well. Uh, D for D, you know, hooked us up there. Uh, but we're we're taking a break from that too. We we regularly do. And where can they follow you on Twitter? Um, at Twitter, they can follow me under Zombies v Robots. Um, even YouTube, I use that actually for a lot of things. Snapchat, <laughs> uh, even my Instagram is Zombies Zombies v Robots. Um, you know, in, those are the two bands, Sci-Fi Caper and Kinship. Um, are, I have a question: Are we gonna split up the? Are we gonna split this up into two different segments, or are we gonna? Now you're just gonna really. So people have to. We should have talked about the video games first, because you know the gamers want to hear that, and, I'll, and split gonna, I'll split it up. I'll split it up. They're not gonna want to hear. The boring you know me, I'm gonna, I'll say no, but I end up fucking splitting it up anyway. So I'll have the, the original version with the full length, and then I'll have the other version that yeah, splits up the video game, just the video game segment. Okay, I'll just say I don't George. know what you wanted to do. Just for George. Or if you wanted to do like a part one, part two, and then, and then in, in between you could even add a commercial if you wanted to. You yeah. know, we're sponsored by on it, you know, try it, audible.com. I don't think we have any of those contracts anymore because how long we, we haven't <laughs> <laughs> And Do not I, try on it. We, Do not we get audible. We all have personal lives. We had things to do. We took a little longer break than we thought. Uh, me and George started talking in October about, hey, let's do uh, Screaming Rebels. Didn't happen. We said November. Didn't happen. December, we're like, fuck it. Let's go ahead and just do it. It feels good doing it again. Not going to lie. Um, Victor. Oh, wait, George, one more because you're a gamer. Where... How can they add you on PS4 if they want to play with you, not sexually? Oh, that, that's actually the only place where I don't have Zombies v. Robots. I actually uh, do have Zombies v. Robots on my Xbox Live account. Um, I do not have an Xbox, but I do have an Xbox <laughs> Live account. That's how hardcore I am, just in case you were wondering. Um, but my, my gamer tag for uh, PS3 and PS4 is Captain Sasquatch. Oh, that's right. I remember I had Captain Sasquatch, and I was like, who the hell is this? All right. That's an awesome right. name. Yeah, I, I, I like it. All Maybe right. Maybe you wanted to steal it from me. Yeah, <laughs> probably do. Victor, yeah. where can we follow you on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and on Xbox? Uh, like George, I use the same for everything. It's Victor, spelled V-I-C-K-T-O-R, 54. 
Um, so you can find me that on Twitter, on Instagram, Xbox Live, PlayStation Network, even though I don't have a PlayStation right now. So <laughs> He's the same as me. <laughs> you laugh at me. <laughs> and then uh, I, that's also my Hotmail account. So if you want to add me on uh, Facebook, you can do so. At Victor Victor Hotmail. <laughs> And he will have a Snapchat account, and it'll be the same thing as Victor. I just made one right now, and I, I added one. you. <laughs> <laughs> and it is Victor54. It was open. Nobody likes that name, I guess. Okay. And for me, my name's Hector. You can follow me on Instagram at Screaming Rebels and on uh, Hector G. Gomez on Twitter. Uh, you can follow my MMA uh, venture of uh, on I'm a channel. You can do it as well. Uh, I'm a channel on Facebook. Uh, for people that want to know where I'll be at, the next events that we'll be doing will be the Cage Warrior up in Porterville. Uh, we'll be there January 24th, as well as uh, the Tachi Palace for the championship fights on February. I'm not sure the date. Um, uh, International MMA channel will be there. We'll be covering those uh, live, and I think I have a permanent residence resident with... Uh, Tachi Palace as well, so that I'm very happy about that. Um, go ahead and follow us. You can follow on YouTube as well as uh, uh, International MMA Channel. I can do my predictions. Don't forget to watch UFC 168. It's going to be fucking badass. Um, that's it. That's our show. I'd like to thank George for always being an awesome partner in crime in this. And if I go down, he's going to go down with the FBI. That's just the way it goes. <laughs> Uh, We're going to share the same prison cell. <laughs> I'd like to thank Victor for being on the show, and I'd like to thank Victor for being our number one hardcore fan. He's been watching us from day one. Um, the other thing I want to say is this is the way that we're going to be doing it now. We're going to be doing it on on the, on the Google. If you guys are still avid fans of the podcast, uh, go ahead and uh, message us at thescreamingrebels.com. I'll go ahead and do an audio file of this and I can go ahead and drop it in your Dropbox. So there you go for the people that want to listen to it. I'll still do the audio version that will, all you guys got to do is send us an email, and I'll go ahead and send it out to you guys. Right, so we're not going to do iTunes podcast? iTunes is suspended right now, too, for all podcasters until the 27th. Oh, man. I, so January I 27th. They're releasing the contracts. I think they're now going to start charging people to do oh. that and put their podcast on there. So we're going to do it this way, we, and, and it's better for us because we can see how many viewers are liking us. It's easier for people to put comments, and then, like I said, if they want an audio file of this thing, they just email us at thescreamingrebels.com or gmail.com, and I'll be more than happy to send it out to them. We've got two viewers. Two. Two viewers. There you go. <laughs> I have how one you... viewer. Oh, I, I have no control over this stuff. How do you see this? It's on the bottom. All right, I'm going to end this one. We'll see you guys later. George and Victor, we might stay and chat a little bit. Have fun, everybody. And we'll have one. Oh, I'll let you guys know when me and George decide to have another one. But this oh, is season, season three, episode one. I'm saying I'm calling it episode one because the rest of them were podcasts. This is a video cast, so it's a little bit different. Hope you guys enjoy. Let us know what you think. Bye. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. Once you change your philosophy, you change your thought pattern. Once you change your thought pattern, you change your, your attitude. Once you change your attitude, it changes your behavior pattern. And then you go on into some action. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country.